Everybody, Randy here in the Eastwood Garage. Today it's everything blasting from pressure blasters to blast cabinets and a few cool products in between. So we have Andy here, who's product manager for our blasting category. He's going to be demonstrating some stuff, uh, giving you some specs, and basically giving you a little bit of a buyer's guide and also going over abrasive media and uh, letting you know which is best for your application. And let's just get to it. This is why you're here. If you have any questions, Scotty C's over here. He's going to be <coughs> answering them. Um, how you doing today, Scott? Not bad. I had a good weekend. Got a lot of stuff done. So back and ready at it to get you guys answered. If you have questions, YouTube, Facebook, shoot them over here. I can take care of them. Or we can also shoot them over to Andy or Randy to answer live. All right. So, yep. If you have any questions, uh, just uh, post them as a comment on YouTube or Facebook and uh, Scott will answer them. And if you want to visit Eastwood, get more information. There's links in Facebook and YouTube in the description. You can click and go right to the pages. So we've got three blast cabinets. We've got more than this. Uh, we're going to go and we've got some pressure blasters, including the dual blaster you see over there, which is really cool because it's got two tanks. so You can hold soda and an abrasive media. And we've got some economical uh, versions as well. And uh, before we go to Andy, we've got some footage. So if you're not familiar with them, um, that are just going to demonstrate all of them pretty quickly. So we've got our blast cabinets here. And um, really nice because it keeps all the media contained. And uh, you can do some uh, decent sized parts uh, based on uh, which blast cabinet you have. Here's our very economical, it's our blast out of a bucket, um, which is great for um, just doing some small stuff. And, and uh, here's a pressure blaster, which is perfect if you've got uh, a car. Some outside that obviously won't fit in a blast cabinet, a pressure blaster is the way to go. So Andy, um, I guess let's get started here with our blast cabinets. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with what you're all most familiar with, which are blast cabinets themselves. So this is our benchtop blast cabinet, um, smaller unit. You can fit like probably smallest wheels, maybe motorcycle wheels, something along those lines, but it's not gonna take up too much room. It does yeah. have a very, very good gun in it. Um, all three of these units actually share the same blasting gun. Yeah. Which is, is it, is it the gun there that's actually in our? Yes, so if, if you actually look here, this is the same gun that's used in all of our three cabinets. Um, and also the blast out of the bucket, as you see here, this is a professional grade gun. So you don't have to worry that you're getting a small unit, you're not gonna suffer in performance. Yeah. So this unit is top loading. So the uh, actual size of the product you can put in there that you're gonna be blasting is yeah. actually the size of the entire um, it's about the three opening feet. lid. Correct. So as I said before, you're not gonna suffer just because you have a small unit doesn't mean you're actually gonna be having your poor performance. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the modular blast cabinet. The reason why it's called the modular blast cabinet is because you either can choose to have your large legs or it, it comes it with come, smaller legs. It comes with these. So, um, you know, you can put it on, like, like you see here, you, it, it'll just mount right on your workbench. Yeah. Or if you want to make it, you can just get these and... Correct. So this unit, it being the size it is, it's perfect where you can actually have material in it, have it be filled with 30 pounds or more material for a blasting material. You can still pick it up and move it around. It's, yeah. it's light enough, small enough to be able to do that. Another great thing is this thing sits perfectly on top of our big um, parts cleaner, oh, parts washer. Okay. So you can actually sit it on top of that. You know, that one's already set yeah. up with its legs. So you can move it out of the way once you need to use your parts cleaner or you can set it up with full standing legs if you've got the room. You know, we're not forcing you into one thing or another. This is a good solution for the guy that doesn't have much room, but yeah. he wants enough area to be able to blast larger things. This unit also has struts in it. Okay. So you don't have to worry about the door coming down, you know, smacking you in the face. Um, you can use this with our filtration system, which you can see right over here on the back of the larger cabinet. Yeah. So you can buy that separately, bolt it right on, and then you don't have to worry about using a shop vac something along those lines. You can if you already but, have one. Yeah, if, if you don't have a dust collector, in the back there's a tube and you just hook your shop vac to it Correct. and that's going to clear out all Which the Which you dust. can actually see, looks like a little yeah. smokestack right here. You can see it on top there. Um, this unit also does have an LED light so you don't have to worry about ever suffering from you know, having poor lighting conditions. Yeah. A lot of people wouldn't put a flashlight or something like that inside of the unit. You'd never have to worry about that. And also with all these units, especially these two, you've got Tear Extra little tear-offs that come with it, five tear-offs per when you buy the unit, and you yeah. can buy it from us very cheaply. Don't worry about ever not being able to see. You can quick tear one off, put a new one on, mm -hmm. clean it up, and you'll be right back to where yeah. you're, you're doing your work. And then the biggest one we have here to show you today. And now this one's more than 11 cubic feet. Correct. So this one's about, this is six, like, and if you just, just join us, the smallest one's three cubic feet. This is six, and this is 11. So this is a, the, the biggest Eastwood 
Eastwood. Yeah, Street. we do have U.S. made larger cabinets that you can order from our website. Mm -hmm. um, they're two and three times the size of these units. Um, they also come with their own full stand-up filtration systems that are literally as tall as you, know, you and I. Mm -hmm. um, this unit breaks down completely. When it gets to you, you actually put it all together, and that way you don't have to have you know, FedEx or UPS freight. Mm -hmm. You can get this thing, shows them two small boxes, you put it together, and you don't have to be spending hundreds of dollars on shipping. Whereas a lot of big units, you're going to be paying all that shipping cost because large it's shipping cost, it comes up damaged because there's a lot of sheet metal here. This is all stacked perfectly, and um, you don't have to worry about that. As we said before, you've got your uh, filtration system, or you can use a shop vac. This also is anti-duning technology. You can mm -hmm. see how deep and yeah, because it's got a really good pickup tube in it. Correct. Well. The pickup tube that's in this unit is actually the same pickup tube as the blast out of the bucket. So it's incredibly efficient. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the blast of the bucket, you don't have to worry about that you're, you know, have some really budget minor thing that doesn't perform. They perform great in um, low CFM and also uh, low amounts of, of media inside yeah. the actual con container and itself. And you can fit like a 20 inch wheel in here. Correct. And another thing, like earlier you had mentioned about it being top loading, which is really nice because if it was side loading and you had a header that was this big, all of a sudden now you can't put this, you can't put it next to a wall because you're going to need three feet out here to open up a door yep. and get your header in. Where this, you can put it in a corner. You know, we had, we've had ours along a railing and a wall yep. and it's fine because you just open it up and put everything from the top. So it takes up even less space just because it's yep. top loading. Which also brings up another point. So you see on this unit on the back right now, you've got the yeah. filtration system. When you buy our filtration system, you get a tube that's a couple feet long. If you wanted to, you could put this directly against the door or against um, mm -hmm. your wall in your shop, and you can mount that to the wall adjacent to it. That way you're not ever yeah, you know, putting yeah. up any space. You can put it in a corner, wherever you really want to, and you don't have to worry about um, you know, not being able to get things inside of it. Yeah. You can really put it in a corner and not have to worry about that. All right, well, I guess we, before we move on to um, uh, the pressure blasters, maybe we'll see if Scott has any questions or anything. Yeah, we're cruising along. Somebody did ask about the gloves, you know, what size they are, you know, if they're one size fits most, if they are, you know, how they, how they work. And I don't think we found anyone yet that hasn't fit into our gloves. <laughs> yeah, they are larger gloves. Um, I know I wear a double X glove, yeah. and these fit my hands uh, very easily. You are, they are also are replaceable. So if you're using a really heavy grit and you eventually over many, many hours, Mm -hmm. You know, get like a small hole. You can replace them. Very cost effective, and get back to uh, get back to blasting. So these are all on Eastwood.com. Yep. Um, the replacement glass, the replacement um, you know, plastic liners, also on Eastwood, and yeah. all of our consumables. If you ever are halfway through a project <laughs> and realize that this just isn't working as well as it used to, check your consumables. Yeah, the nozzle. Yeah, right. the nozzles. Um, there's also a, a inner nozzle, the jet. Mm -hmm. That's also on our website incredibly cheap to, uh, to replace. When it comes down to it, you might be in an hour into a job and it's taking you forever. Just make sure you got a handful of extra consumables in yeah. your pocket. That way you can get back to work and, and you can really cut your time down substantially by having you know, good consumables. Well, actually, actually, I guess before we move into pressure blasters, we got a brand new addition okay. uh, sitting right here, right? So if, our cabinets. if you guys have been had one of our cabinets, somebody else's cabinet, and you know after even 15 minutes of blasting itself, that your hand gets fatigued because you're pulling the trigger. Yeah. Well, what we did was there wasn't very many economical um, units out there when it comes to transferring your unit into a foot pedal mm -hmm. uh, controlled unit. So instead of you sitting there pulling a trigger, what you're going to do is you have a unit that would flow all the time. So you're just hand, you have your hand on it, mm -hmm. and then you He's pipe in a foot pedal. So when you're actually doing the work, all you need to do is just have your foot press down on it, as soon as you don't want to use it, you so just let off. Yeah, so you don't have to pull a trigger, yep. so you don't get that finger fatigue. And this does flow a tremendous amount of media, and we also have all the consumables also for this gun that you get in little two-packs yeah. that uh, don't break the bank. So if you have one of these cabinets and you're thinking about it, this just came in last week, I believe, yep. uh, the foot pedal. So uh, they're at eastwood.com uh, as well. If you follow the, one of the links um, to the blasters, uh, yeah, you'll see them there under the accessories. Yep. So, Scott, are there any more um, questions here before yeah, we move we're on? we're good right now, cruising along. All right. Move uh, over to the pressure blasters? Yeah, let's move over to pressure blasters. All right, so as you guys see right here, we've got um, a single pot pressure blaster. We have our uh, bigger stand-up unit, and we, we go for anywhere from a 50-gallon unit, or 50-pound unit, up to a 200-pound unit. And then you also have the, uh, the dual pressure blaster, 
which can switch from any media back and forth. Most guys do soda in one and then a crushed glass or a glass bead in the other. That way if you're working down a frame and you get all the way to a suspension part that has something that's a little more delicate in it like the rubber yeah. bushings or you've got um, you know, aluminum A-arms, you don't want to have a really aggressive uh, media being sprayed yeah. to something that's a little bit you know, less um, it's, it's not going to put up yeah. with that. So, yeah, that yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, we, like, if you need something real aggressive, you can turn that one on yep. and use your aggressive media. When Correct. you get to a separate spot, a different part of the car, you switch and then maybe go to your soda or whatever yeah. else you're using for that part of the car. Correct. You know, and then without having to swap out all the media out of a, yeah. out of a blaster. Or you can mix them together. You could just set them part way and Correct. get your own, you know, yeah. whichever, you know, like if you need something that's, a little less abrasive for what you're yep. doing, or a little more, you can just tweak, tweak them in a use it the like that. The good thing about this is, on Plus top a dead of man valve. yeah, on top of being able to switch one to the other um, based on what you're actually spraying and what you're trying to clean, if you run out of material, you can switch over to the other just to finish the job quick, so you don't have to stop and then go and refill the mm -hmm. thing. Um, I know that it tends to always run out the last couple inches of what you're yeah. doing, so you can just turn it over to the soda, finish off your job, and uh, you know. Get it completed. And pressure blasters are, I mean, if you have something big, a yep. car, whatever it is, they are great because the car is not going to fit in a blast cap. Yeah, what we mean. tend to do is we put down a big tarp underneath the car, blast as much as you can, move the car away, and then you kind of just reclaim as much as you possibly can, throw it through a strainer, and yeah. get back to working again. Because guys a lot of times wonder, you know, I don't want to go through so much media. You don't have to. Yeah. And you know, make sure you put your safety gear on, you put a tarp down, and you'll be able to reclaim 90% of it. And you can use it a few times. I mean, you'll see, Correct. you know, I mean, you can use, like, ground glass. I've used it three times sometimes, yeah. you know. You it get a little less each time, but, you know, it, it makes it much more And it, uh, it loses economical. its po potency after a while. So eventually you're just going to realize that it's just not as potent as it was in the very, very beginning because it has those sharp edges. Um, with glass bead, it actually it breaks down also. Um, but aluminum oxide and silicon carbide, they keep up for yeah. a very, very Which long time. Which makes them time. Great, great for a cabinet. Correct. And another thing, like if, if you're wondering why should I blast, if you've ever blasted, especially if you're in an area that gets rust, uh, like we're in here in Pennsylvania, you get those pits, and if you just sand over it, th that, that pitted rust, it's still there. Yeah. But if you get, if, but if you can blast and you can blast away those all the rust out of those pits, you know, there's a very good chance that everything's going to yeah. be fine. You're not going to push back up through. So that's one reason that blasting is so nice because you can yeah. you can get that down to that nice white metal even where it's uh, yeah you know, sanding, it's and then rust. you'd have the chemical treat just to be able to try to get yeah. all of it. Instead of doing all that, you just blast right yeah. out and, and like get it all gone. And like a spring, there's a lot of sp uh, parts like yeah. we've done around here that are just like mechanisms uh, that are just all kinds of angles or just a spring. You know, a, a car yeah. spring, and like, how are you going to get into all that? Yeah, with a blaster, you can a get a die in. grinder and multiple amount of tools, so you could just use one, get it done in one shot, yeah. and not ever lose any material that's actually in the cabinet itself. So we got, uh, I guess, any pressure, bra bl any pressure blaster questions? Scott? We actually have a good one that uh, will, you know, across the board relates to all of them, and they're asking, you know, what are your, you know, bare minimum CFM requirements, average CFM requirements to run these cabinets? That way, they get an idea of what compressor they should be running. Is that a statement, or are you asking us a question? No, I'm asking Andy to kind of <laughs> give, give a, a, a broad kind of what, spectrum thing eight, of, of so CFM. These two cabinets, even though you're using the same gun, are going to be a little, little bit lower okay. because of the way they're set up. They've got different pickup tubes. So you're anywhere from 5 to 8 CFM to really operate these things the way they should be. Yeah. Where the larger cabinet, you want to be 9 to 11 CFM to really get you as much out of it as possible. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing is you want to make sure you've got enough of a tank and recovery time. So you can use a smaller cabinet or a smaller um, compressor for these units, but eventually it's going to lose the its, air. its pressure. So yeah. it won't be able to build up fast enough. Give it a little bit of time. Reposition re your part, make sure it's in the, right, in the next spot. You hear your compressor turn off, you start again. Yeah. Um, where the actual pressure blasters You've got anywhere from um, you know, 10 to 15 CFM. This actual larger unit, yeah. you can put an insane amount of CFM, like up to 25 CFM to it, if you would ever have you know, a compressor that could put out that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Where you can take huge swipes down the side of a, of a door. I mean, five or six swipes and the side of a door will be clean. So it's, that's going to come down to a really, really large compressor and large um, hoses to be able to pull that yeah. off. Not all of us have that. Um, some even engine-driven would have to be able to do that. 
So the other thing are a couple uh, small little handheld yep. units here we could check out. As we talked about before, the blast out of the bucket, the whole idea is to give you a professional you know, blasting gun, mm -hmm. but then not to worry about having to buy either a pressure blaster, a cabinet, I want to go outdoor. Um, you just want to try blasting? Yeah, you want to get started and you've got small parts, big parts, doesn't really matter. So you've got that drywall bucket that you've been using yeah. for years. And Maybe they're, they're only not even car parts. Yeah, you exactly. Know, you're, just, you're, you're doing crafts, you're doing something around the house. Yeah, either drywall bucket, any bucket in general. Honestly, you just fill it up with media, you shove the pickup tube in it, plug yeah. in the air, and you get moving. Yeah, and, and if you want to get started, we even offer, uh, we even offer uh, some, uh, some uh, containers here, you know, small ones right here, abrasive media. And this media, tube fits soda. directly in it. It's incredibly efficient. If you have you know, five to seven CFM, we would suggest getting up to the nine to really be able to blast mm -hmm. a lot with this unit. Um, but when it comes down to it, you just buy a bag of media. Even it's if you wanted to, you could just have the media laying yeah. in its bag, shove it down into it, and, and then you go. can get moving. And um, then uh, our speed blaster gun? So the speed blaster is a self-contained unit where you just fill up the actual yeah. um, tank and then you get moving. It, is very similar to the uh, blast of the bucket where you have, you know, your media is right with you the entire time yeah. and you have consumables at the end. Something that a lot of guys don't know, but we also have options to add little oh. attachments where you, instead of having your blasting media go all over the place, what you do is you push this recovery system on the end. Yeah. And if you have one of those little pock marks in your paint and you want to legitimately clean it, not just have a little bit of paint and put it over top of that, uh, that rust spot, what you'd end up doing is you would push, push it against, against the spot, pull the trigger a couple quick times, yeah. check your progress, and it actually will it, recover it all that media back. back in, and you have a literally like oh. a dime size yeah. clean spot where now you can go over, you can do your paint, and uh, you can clean it up. We need to do a video on this. I've, I've actually never, I've never used this one. And then, but blasting's kind of dirty. Scott, you want to shoot a video on this? The Speed Blaster will put you down for a couple of Wednesdays from now. Sure, why not? Let's All right, it. okay. When so, it's 90 degrees in July, we'll have them out there blasting. So other pieces that you have is this is roughly about three quarters of an inch. That's the size of the yeah. actual spot that you would be cleaning, mm -hmm. down to a little half inch one. So if you ever have to get into small seams, you would use this. And this one would also, if you have an outside sharp edge, mm -hmm. is that's the item, the, um, the nozzle you end up using. Where if you hold this nice and tight, you reclaim you know, 99% back into the bag, and all you do is you just pull this off, pour it back in to the What's top. What's this one again, for again? I so was, if you're on... I was too busy squeezing it. <laughs> you grab this. In a lot of cases, so if you're ever on the edge of a door, yeah. you open it, oh. you hit a, a shopping yeah. cart, something like that, what you can do is you'd put it on that edge. You'd clean that edge up, and then you'd be able to do your paint over top of that. What would they think of next? <laughs> so, all right, well, before we, should we move, before we move on to uh, our blast... Uh, all of our media types. Yep. Should we check back in with Scotty C, see if he has any questions? Uh, one of the questions I got asked, uh, Marty asked if using a blaster does heat up and warp the metal and if you should be careful while you operate it. Yes, you definitely should be careful, especially with the yeah. pressure blasters. They have larger CFM um, consumption. They move a lot more material. Don't ever stay on one spot if you're using sheet metal. Try don't to aim go, it straight yeah, at it. Yeah, don't aim it straight. Actually go off to the side slightly yeah. and then let it bounce off. Go back and forth. That way, you're not in one single spot. If you would sit on one spot for an next spin of your yeah. time, and you used a, an IR thermometer, you would see it skyrocket substantially like, very quickly. Like, but like anything, like you hold a grinder in one spot or Correct. something, it's going to it's not to it's that going to extent. Eventually be damaged, but yeah. if you are using some really, really aggressive media, which we'll talk about here in a second, it's possible. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I I've, just, but I mean, but older cars, thicker metal, you don't have near correct. the problems. I mean, you probably have to watch a little bit more with if you're trying to blast something that's yeah. mo very modern. Just be mindful, and. Yeah. If you see it taking away a lot of material fast, just keep moving. Yeah, All you've got to do is just swipe back and forth. And if you still see a little bit of speckles that need to be removed, still more paint, just come back to the area after a minute yeah. or so. It's already cooled down and keep going. Cool. So, all right. Uh, that's, if you're just joining us, this is all uh, blasters, pressure blasting, and everything else. And um, if you have any questions, post them. Scott's over here, as usual, and he's, he's going to answer them or throw them over to, to Andy, and he'll help you out. So now... Uh, we're going to go check out uh, abrasive media and yeah, soda media. Talk about a little bit of media here. Take a here. look at it. So what we have on our website right now, it, it's a basically a, a good, better, best. Mm -hmm. You can see it on any one of the pages for our media itself. It'll tell you whether this is you know, ground glass is good for you know, removing rust, bondo, 
um, that's probably the best for. And there's for different things. grits. Like and you can see, that one looks yeah, like. Yeah, this is that's very, very large. You're going to want to only use this in pressure blasters. The cabinets, it's just too yeah. large and it gets stuck in the orifices. You can see how large these pieces are. The lower the numerical number, it means the larger the grit and more aggressive it okay. is. As you can see, the ground glass here, you know, 40, 70, it's a lot more fine. It's like what you'd see almost on the beach. Yeah. Um, the reason why this works is because it's very jagged. It's just mm -hmm. crushed glass or ground glass. Where this heavier one is probably, you'd want to use that more for like a frame, heavier metal, Correct. something yeah. that's got some big rust. Yeah, something where you have um, like a rubber coating, a rubber frame coating, okay. something along those lines. Very, very aggressive. It will you know, eat up your consumables very quickly too, mm -hmm. so that's why we said before, make sure you use, um, you have a whole handful of consumables yeah. on the side, bring your, uh, your blaster back to optimal. Because the more aggressive the media is, the odds are it's going to wear out everything along Correct. the way as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to move over to some more aggressive um, stuff, silicon carbide and aluminum oxide. What you see right here is probably the best of what's going to be in a cabinet itself. Yeah. We suggest numerically 60 or higher, which means um, 60 high meaning smaller grit. Um, silicon carbide works incredibly well in a cabinet, as does aluminum oxide and glass bead. You can see how fine these are, especially you know, your glass bead here. With glass bead as opposed to ground glass, you actually have rounded edges. Mm -hmm. So using glass bead on aluminum is, is not going to take large chunks out of the aluminum. It's actually going to clean. Yeah. It's not going to remove the material itself. It's just going to remove what's on the material. Um, aluminum oxide is really aggressive also. It's going to be probably the best um, thing that you're going to use in a cabinet. And these all are you know, very cost effective, especially in a cabinet because you can keep on reclaiming yeah, keep and use it over them. and over and over again. And you could also use them through a pressure blaster as well. You can also. Um, these two are a little bit more expensive, yeah. but they're meant to be reclaimed. Um, and these also last substantially longer than anything else you're going to see here. Um, as I said before, if you go on our website, we give you kind of a good, better, best. If you yeah. are blasting aluminum, we suggest the following things. Yeah and you can kind of walk your way through what you need. So there's a chart that will just, you know, you don't have to remember it all right now. You can Correct. go, when you go to eastwood.com, you'll see a chart and it's going to help you, you know, yep. make sure you get the right meat. And we'll move and then, over to the, the least aggressive. Um, soda blasting became very, very popular, you know, 20, 30 years ago yeah. um, because it takes literally no material of metal off. You can even blast plastic if you really wanted to. You just got to be a little bit more mindful of uh, that You can go across if there's, if there's plastic headlights, stuff Correct. like that. Yeah. You, so you don't have to you don't have to worry about destroying them like you probably yep. would with ground glass. And the same thing with walnut shell. A lot of guys use walnut shell to clean pistons. That way you're not changing the shape of the piston. You can really get it cleaned up and then you put your rings back in it once it's you know, And they're biodegradable. Clean. So Correct. you blast and they're... Yeah, they're you can blast outdoors and you don't have to worry about it going into the grass and you know, killing a whole bunch of things. But they're also a single use because of that Correct. basically. So especially with, with walnut shells, they break down as soon as they basically hit the material. Because yeah. um, as we all know, it's it's just a nut. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's a shell that um, that just breaks down. It's very, very. Uh, it's kind of soft. And one thing about soda is it does leave a film. Correct. So when you blast, just make sure that you really prep before you go to primer or paint. Yeah. So we'd suggest using you know, pre, depending on where low VOC pre, wipe down the entire vehicle um, or whatever you're blasting, and then use some um, like some after blast, something yeah. along those lines. That way you get that chem that chemical etch, and you don't have to worry about the. Uh, any of the rust coming back right away. So, so if you right. guys have any questions, you know, yeah, we'll send them over to, to, we'll go over to, to Scott, Scott see if he has any or questions. look on eastwood.com and yeah. look over the chart and really so, look at what's best for you. So Scott, are we, any questions on blast cabinets, pressure blasters, sure. media? Speaking of blasting, something I figure we'll cover. I don't know if you guys went over yet. Uh, there was asked about using just standard play sand in these. We don't recommend using it in any of our units as blasting with actual sand is gonna make like a crystalline silica dust. Uh, which leads to, and I know I'm going to pronounce mesothelioma? it Mesothelioma? Uh, either that or silicosis. But either silicosis. way, it's hardening silicosis? of the lungs. Silicosis? What's um, mesothelioma? So, uh, that's something I think else? that's asbestos. But um, you want to go <laughs> ahead and make sure that you always use a, a media that's specifically designed for blasting. That way they're going to be... Just you know, don't use sand. Just don't use sand. Yeah. It's easier to say. Don't Basically, when you go and get blast media, it'll say silica-free yeah. on it. Um, you, we can't stress this enough. Scott, is, it's, this is a really serious topic. People have gotten... Yeah. Definitely ill, so we want to make sure that you guys buy like certified blast media, yeah. and don't just go to your you know local you know, big box store and just get play, play sand, sand yeah. or contractor sand. It's got a lot of chemicals in it, so that they doesn't grow things and become moldy. There's a reason why we tell yeah. you not to. Um, you go to Eastwood.com, get the get the right stuff for the job, and uh, you know 
Yeah. Happy blasting. Any, uh, yeah, we got one request if Joe can hop around from where he is now. Uh, they've uh -huh. asked if they can actually see the um, the cabinet vacuum on the back, or the uh, dust collection system, sorry. I was okay, really yeah, while, while Joe they gets back. see what it looks like. All right, Joe's going to get around to the back. If you're just joining us, you can watch this recorded. It's sort of a buyer's guide on everything blasting, pressure blasters, blast cabinets, and even some economical handheld uh, blasting systems. And uh, somebody was asking about the dust collector. We do offer a dust collector. Right there is on the back, just connects to the back. Um, you don't have to have a dust collector, but you should at least hook up a shop vacuum mm -hmm. to the back to, to collect the dust. Uh, but dust collector is a, a really nice way of keeping it clean because it keeps the area clean so you can really see. Yeah, it's, when it comes down to it, as you're blasting, it just sends particles all over the place. So it becomes almost like a haze inside your yeah. cabinet. You want to make sure that that air gets moved throughout. As you see right here with Joe shooting, this section, this is actually an air vent. Mm -hmm. And what you end up doing is you, you can move that, turn on your cabinet, and you actually see the gloves raise up. It creates yeah. a, an actual vacuum. So you want to make sure you adjust that to the point where they're just slightly under vacuum. It'll move that air through. You'll be able to blast quicker because you'll be able to see your part. And um, that way, you also aren't going to get stuff you know, in your garage or wherever you're yeah. blasting is going to get in the air. Dust These are away. sealed, but there's... As you can see, yeah. that little vent, there's going to be little things that are going to leak out. If you've ever blasted, you know the stuff manages to get itself get, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Get itself so everywhere. having a dust collection system or the proper safety gear if you're ever doing outside, we do have hoods, um, respirators, all things you need if you're going to use a yeah. pressure blaster. Suits. Yeah. Like Full I always suit. wear a suit, mask, get, you know, get everything you can. I mean, Correct. well, if you're blast, a blast cabinet, you don't need it. That's yeah. what makes them nice. But yeah, yeah, if you're using a pressure blaster outside, you're going to want a hood. Yeah. Suit, you know, get that stuff. It just, it's a lot nicer. And all the safety gear, all the media, all the actual units are available on our website. Um, yeah. And as we said before, this is kind of a buyer's guide, but the way our website's laid out, it's also a buyer's guide to help you get the right thing so you don't have yeah, to come back and, and get something else after the fact. You get the right pressure, pressure blaster for you, get the right cabinet for you. Anything else today, Scott? Nope, we're good. Scott, you got, you got a couple videos this week. You got a lot. You got, we're going to see you Friday morning. You're going to see me Friday morning and Monday afternoon. Yeah. Yes, Monday afternoon. Yes, we have Scott. <laughs> oh, geez, I hope you <laughs> oh, you got to think of something, huh? Uh, yes. Do you no, know what you're doing Monday Monday afternoon? Monday's already taken care of. It's Friday we have to figure out. Yeah, Friday. Yeah, Friday might be a, a daily deal or clearance. Might be a speed blaster, something. you know, maybe. Yeah, a speed blaster. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we got to get you to demo that. <laughs> we'll pick out a nice hot day. There you go. Nice hot That's day, a, wear a whole bunch of gear. A Tyvek suit. <laughs> so, all right, well, thanks a lot, Andy. We're going to see you again in a month. We've got yep. to come up with another live video. So thanks for joining us. Don't forget, uh, tune in every morning at 8.30 for our daily deal and Monday through Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern time for more videos like this and product demonstrations. See you guys tomorrow. Okay.